So it appears that the launch of Mars's Perseverance rover has been delayed. Again. This is getting a bit too close for our taste now because the launch window is only one month wide. And China's Mars mission meanwhile, surprise, is not being delayed. So will China's Mars mission be able to reach Mars before NASA? Then we of course have to take a look at the current progress of Starship at Boca Chica. Updates regarding Elon's annual Starship presentation. Dr. Zubrin saying that SpaceX could land on Mars before 2030. The first joint mission of SpaceX and Space Force. And also the progress at Blue Origin and the ULA. Our obligatory SLS rent. SpaceX forcing Europe to go reusable. A bit on a light cell 2 mission. And even a steampunk robot for icy moon exploration. Really a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. So before we come to the delay of NASA's Perseverance rover, and what an embarrassment it would be if China would launch their Mars rover before NASA. Let's first analyze the current progress of Starship at Boca Chica. On the weekend, the latest Raptor engine, SN27, arrived at the launch pad, where the Starship SN5 prototype is currently attached. By the way, SN5 has already successfully completed a series of cryo pressure tests. Nothing leaked or ruptured, which is a very good sign. Because as you know, Starship SN3 collapsed during such a cryogenic pressure test. Another hurdle is out of the way. And now, having installed the Raptor engine, static fire tests are commencing. This is another hurdle which caused the lives of some other Starship prototypes. Should Starship SN5 survive the static fire test, there is a good chance that we can still witness the 150 meter hopping test this week. Cameron County road closure dates indicate that we can see the hopping test as soon as on Wednesday, July the 8th, with backup dates on the following two days. So fingers crossed to finally see this epic event. Because it's been 10 months now since the last time we could see such a spectacular event with Starhopper. And the annual Starship presentation will take place in September this year, as Elon indicated in this tweet here. This makes sense as the last Starship presentations also took place in the September timeframe. Hopefully we can learn some interesting updates on the efficiency of the new 304L stainless steel alloy and some design changes for Starship and Super Heavy. Maybe even an updated roadmap for future Starship Moon and Mars missions. Okay, so now finally about the Mars Perseverance rover. We remember that initially the launch of this important mission was set for the 17th of July. The Mars launch window, by the way, is only open from mid-July to mid-August. The cause for this delay were some problems with the ground support equipment. But now the launch has been delayed again to the 30th of July because of some problems with the Atlas V rocket upon which the rover will be launched. Yeah, a ULA rocket, that figures. If the launch gets delayed to after mid-August, then that's it. Then we'll have to wait a full 26 months for the next launch window to open. And that would be super embarrassing. Not only because by that time we might actually see SpaceX cargo starships launch towards Mars, but no, because the Chinese also have their own Mars mission in the pipeline. And guess what? This one is not being delayed. Its launch is still set for between the 20th and 25th of July, as initially planned. The Perseverance rover is really important because it will have a lot of instruments on board, such as the Sherlock instrument, which would be able to detect organic molecules and thus to indirectly detect the presence of potential Martian life. While the Chinese Mars mission doesn't contain an instrument for such a purpose, still, it is a very complex mission. It consists of an orbiter, a lander, and a rover. Scientific instruments include a ground-penetrating radar, a meteorological measurement instrument, and a magnetic field detector. So the Chinese Mars rover could offer some valuable insights on Mars' local magnetic field strength, weather, and possible permafrost layers below the ground. 
It would be super embarrassing if NASA's Mars rover would only make it to Mars in 2022. So we really hope that NASA and ULA will get their problems under control. Talking of ULA, they now got the first BE-4 engine delivered from Blue Origin for their future Vulcan rocket. This is the future rocket that will be so totally reusable that it can even, get this, reuse the engines. The engines. These are by the way the same engines that will power the new Glenn rocket of Blue Origin, which already has been flying since a long long time in these renderings here. In reality, however, who knows when? ULA and Blue Origin, a perfect match, we'd say. A perfect match. And besides ULA and Blue Origin, what else is super slow, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, SLS. The SLS Center Core avionics check is currently going on at Stennis Space. Oh, sorry, I mean, Stennis, I'm probably not allowed to say this anymore, right? It's, it's, not, it's not PC, right? Anyway, this Center Core avionics check is the second of eight green run tests of the SLS Center Core for Artemis 1. And to further show their unconditional support and endless love for SLS, NASA ordered additional space shuttle, um, we mean, of course, SLS solid rocket boosters from Northrop Grumman for an additional six Artemis missions. So until Artemis 9. Artemis 1 will be the uncrewed test flight of Orion launched with the SLS to circle the moon. Artemis 2 will be a crewed circling of Orion around the moon. So basically an almost one-to-one -one repeat of Apollo 8 only 53 years after Apollo 8. Mm. And then Artemis 3 will finally foresee the first manned, I mean crewed, man is also not PC enough, landing on the moon which is currently planned for 2024. We still kind of doubt that NASA will be able to pull this off, especially with all the political opposition. And it's not even sure if NASA will actually get the necessary budget in order to perform this feat. But we shouldn't worry because if NASA won't do it, then SpaceX will certainly land their own astronauts on the moon with Starship probably around that time. In other news, Dr. Robert Zubrin, the famous author of The Case for Mars, says that he believes SpaceX could land astronauts on Mars before 2030. He said, quote, If Starship is flying regularly to low Earth orbit by 2024, the next president will ask his or her advisors, can we get to Mars before the end of my second term? The answer will be yes. So then it will happen. By making the mission practical, SpaceX will make it sellable. We partly agree with Dr. Zubrin here, as we also believe that a crewed SpaceX Mars mission could very well happen before 2030. But we kind of doubt that NASA could have Starship human rated so fast. Of course, we hope to be surprised, but you shouldn't forget how slow NASA usually is with such things. In our opinion, it's more likely that SpaceX will just completely bypass NASA and land their own people on Mars with Starship and Super Heavy. Because remember that thanks to the income from Starlink by the mid-2020s, SpaceX will have enough funds to carry out their own Moon and Mars missions. Regarding Space Force, the youngest branch of the US forces just launched their very first mission. It certainly is a top secret mission, flying a troop of space marines to low Earth orbit, to Space Force's secret space station, where they will perform zero-g combat training in order to prepare for future zero-g space battles, right? <laughs> Almost. This first mission of Space Force was a GPS satellite. So really very, very humble beginnings. At least it was launched by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. A very smart choice, by the way, on June the 30th. Working together with SpaceX is already certainly a big step into the right direction. Now when Starship will be finished, we said it time and time again and we maintain our position, we will sooner or later see a Space Force variant of Starship. 
Especially after Elon's remarks on that topic, about which we talked in this video here. In other news, SpaceX is not only completely disrupting the launch business of the old complacent companies like ULA and agencies like Roscosmos, but no, Europe is also feeling the pressure from SpaceX. Under pressure. So much so that Thierry Breton, European Commissioner for Internal Market, has said that Ariane 6 will basically be DOA because of SpaceX and that if Europe wants to stay competitive, it needs to start working on a fully reusable Ariane 7 ASAP. That's already a quite good insight, but we think even so it might be too late. Ariane 6 is scheduled to have its first test flight in 2021. So Ariane 7 is extremely unlikely to have first test flights before 2025, best case. And as we know by that time, Starship will have made all other rockets, really all other rockets, completely obsolete. So we think that ULA, Roscosmos and Ariane Space will end up being the Nokias of the spaceflight industry. That's what happens when you sleep for too long and when you sleep on innovation. Now the only chance we think Europe will have will be to charter some SpaceX starships for their own missions. And we are saying that as Europeans. In more positive news, light sail 2, which has been circling the Earth for one year now, and as you remember, was launched into space among many other payloads with a Falcon Heavy. Bruce Bett, light sail program manager and the chief scientist at the Planetary Society, said that the overarching goal, technologically, was to demonstrate controlled solar cell propulsion. And this goal is now successfully completed by light cell 2. This is excellent news because light cells are now the single best technology which could enable us to visit other star systems in the coming decades. No other technology is currently advanced enough to offer us that possibility. Breakthrough Starshot will attempt exactly that. So having a light cell adjust its trajectory is a super important feat. Because without many course corrections, there cannot be a flyby of exoplanets in nearby star systems. And for all of you steampunk lovers out there, which we hope there are many because, come on, steampunk is probably some of the coolest stuff ever invented by humans together with cyberpunk. This conceptual robot is being currently investigated at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. This soccer ball sized robot called Sparrow would hop around on Europa or Enceladus. It will old school heat up water and release the steam in a controlled manner. Because the gravity is so low on these moons, the robot would be able to hop a few meters with a single hop. We think that's a really cool idea which we hope to see in action on Europa or Enceladus, hopefully before Starship will land there. <laughs> And if you're wondering if SpaceX would actually be able to colonize the Moon and Mars at the same time, you can check out this video right here. So thanks for watching the JI Space Report. Then I would say, see you next time and on to the future. To a magnetic field in. Yeah.